tonight. A community catastrophe. Confectionery crack for kids. Hardcore powder junkies. A policeman. And fatal fears. Good evening, and welcome to Factoria. Now, a small seaside village in Cornwall, the setting you'd expect to see scenes from Scarface, train spotting, or Pulp Fiction? Of course not. But beneath this idyllic vision of rural England, sound is emerging, affecting every class, age, and social standing of the community. It's the sound of addiction. It's been around for years, some of us may remember it from our childhood. Some may even dabble in it now, oblivious to the devastation it can wreak. It's available in many sweet shops and completely legal, but just how innocent is this colorful candy, Fizz Whiz? Popping candy, the children's candy which comes in a crystallized powder form in both strawberry and cola flavors, has recently been discovered to have a devastating impact on the lives of many residents of a small village in South East Cornwall. Recent studies have found that a regular intake of Fizz Whiz popping candy can induce a morphine-like high. But these supposedly harmless sachets have been around for years, so why haven't we heard anything before? Simply put, Fizz Whiz popping candy needs to be taken in very large quantities to build up the chemical that produces the high. This chemical stays in the bloodstream and can be topped up with much smaller doses. It is because of this irregular intake pattern that the effects of fizzwiz have remained unknown all this time, which brings us to this small village in Cornwall. There are several rumours as to why this legal narcotic has been discovered here, but available in abundance from the local stores, many residents have discovered the highs and horrors that come with fizzwiz popping candy. We caught up with one such user. Well, I guess I first heard rumours about it being like some kind of drug about two years ago. But I thought it was a load of crap because I'd seen loads of kids eat sachets of them. And, you know, it had no effect on them whatsoever apart from the usual sugar rush type thing. I remember one Halloween my son came back from trick or treating with his auntie. He had hundreds of the bloody things. I ended up eating loads of them. Hello? I noticed they were getting a bit moorish and then on the second day I kind of started feeling a bit mellow, a bit happy, a kind of dizzy feeling. Only a little bit at first, but it got stronger and stronger the more I ate. And obviously now I know why. And that's pretty much how it started. Well, I didn't try and get help at first because, I mean, who do you go to with a problem like this? and eventually it really started affecting me at work. The thing is, you can take a sachet of Christmas or your love heart into a classroom and nobody blinks an eyelid. It was in this primary school that Julie's addiction became uncontrollable and with no obvious reason, colleagues were confused. After a few months, um, I got suspended and then after that I was let go of just because I couldn't function at work properly. Everyone thought I was on smack and, to be honest, I thought there was actually something wrong with me. But i found out since that there's loads of people in the village all hooked. All sorts of people you'd never expect, like school kids, doctors, even a local councillor. Couldn't work out what was wrong with her. Couldn't see her taking anything dodgy other than a fair few more sweets than usual, really. Uh, couldn't see any needle marks or anything like that, to be honest, but she was just such a walking around, we thought it must be drugs. This is all very distressing. But how does it work? And how has it gone unnoticed all this time? Fizz Whiz Popping Candy is made up of fairly simple ingredients. Sugar, lactose, glucose, artificial flavour and CO2E290. 
and is mixed and compressed in an extremely hot pressurized tank. Then is left to cool quickly in large refrigerated areas, which forms a crystallized candy that you get in the packet. Popping candy works when the chemicals in your saliva combine with the chemical CO2E290, one of the key ingredients, and cause a chemical reaction making the crystals pop. Recent research has shown that this reaction also releases a small quantity of byproduct chemical WH9Z into the bloodstream, directly through the tongue and through the gases that escape into the lungs when the candy explodes or pops. Small quantities of this chemical will do very little to the user initially. The unique aspect of WH9Z is that it stays in the bloodstream for years. The human body's blood filtering system, kidneys, liver, etc., allow this chemical through so it stays dormant in the system until the user gets their next hit. The drug is described as a cumulative drug, where every hit adds to the level of WH9Z in the blood and reawakens the dormant buildup of the chemical for a few hours. This chemical directly affects the opiate receptors in the brain and induces a morphine-like high. It is unknown exactly how long it stays in the blood, because this is a relatively new discovery, which is only really developed in one small area of Cornwall, and long-term tests have not been possible. It is because of this unusual intake pattern that Fizzwiz Poppin' Candy has never been regarded as a narcotic or drug. It is unknown how these unusual properties were discovered, or by who, but what is clear is that it all started in a small village in South East Cornwall. We caught up with the local law enforcement to learn a little bit more about Fizzwiz and its effects on the community. Sergeant Roberts has become a bit of an expert and has recently revealed some worrying discoveries, not only limited to Fizzwiz popping candy. Well, first of all, it seems that the problem isn't just limited to popping candy. We now know that there's several other products that cause different intoxications when combined with the popping candy chemical. So first off, let's take Fizzwiz popping candy. It's also known as Frankie, Frank, Holly and Shizzlewizzle. Comes in handy sachets like this, Tempia pop, if you'll excuse the pun and it's available in abundance from the local stores. Now, the most common way to take it would be directly on the tongue, although chasing, which is inhaling from heated foil, smoking through a glass pipe, directly into the bloodstream via a needle, and even eyeballing, which is dissolving it in a small glass of water and then absorbing it directly through the eyeball into the bloodstream. And these are all methods that have been taken up by some of the more adventurous, I suppose you could say, uh, but definitely the more desperate users. Now, once the user has built up enough WH9Z in his or her bloodstream, there are various other narcotics that can combine with the chemical to induce different types of highs. Um, the WAM bars, uh, available in the local shop, also known on the street as Ham, Harry and Wham Bam, Thank You Ma'am, contains the chemical WH7B, uh, which combines with the popping candy chemical to induce a more aggressive speed amphetamines-like high. Uh, users tend to lose their appetite when they're hammed up and often lose a lot of weight when addicted. Uh, next we have Love Hearts. I'm sure you all remember these from your childhood. Uh, now on the street, these are also known as Easy Tart or Slag. They contain the chemical H0E69LVX, uh, which combined with the WH9Z induces an ecstatic feeling. The side effects include severe mood swings, strong feelings of irrational anger and hatred, and memory loss. Flying saucers and rainbow dust. Now these are considered the dirtiest addition to all the new narcotics. It's also known as fly paste, dirt and derrick on the street. It contains the chemical CH0NT, which combined with the WH9Z induces a very up and down, high and low intoxication. And it's also renowned for making the user very tetchy and edgy and I suppose you could say narky. Um, apart from the flatulence, the flying saucer shells are harmless. Um, 
We are looking into some of the other sweets, such as Parma Violets, Rainbow Drops, Candy Sticks and Rusks, but we are yet to find any conclusive evidence on any of these products. With all these discoveries in one small community, you'd probably expect a public outcry. We caught up with some of the local residents to get their views. Uh, well, we've just moved back to the village. Um, I haven't really heard anything about it. Yeah, I've, I've heard some things about Fizz Whiz and I don't really know what to make of it, but I, I heard down at the school that they've been having problems down there with it. I think it was a teacher and I think got the sack as well. So I don't know what to make of it. Some, it sounds like it's quite serious if he's going to get sacked from school. We know nothing about it. No comment. So it's sweets as drugs, is it? With revelations on a product like this, it's difficult to pinpoint who's responsible for such a unique problem. It's clear something has to be done before it affects more communities like this. So whose fault is it? The user? The supplier? The manufacturer? The government? I think in this case very little blame can be placed on the actual users because at the time the effects were unknown. Well I can't believe they're still allowed to sell it. Uh, I'm speaking to my solicitor about compensation from the makers of Fizzwiz and he thinks I've got a good case. I have to wait until my tests are done on it. But what's really crazy is the shop is still selling it. Even after they found out what it's saying to people, you can go down the local shop now and buy some. It's crazy. But it's certainly not clear cut. I mean, obviously the manufacturers have to take some of the blame for not testing the product extensively enough and clearly they need to act quickly and decisively in light of these discoveries. I would also suggest that the laws governing the manufacturers need tightening to ensure rigorous long-term testing is carried out on all food products before they're released on sale. The manufacturers refused to be interviewed but did release a statement. We have no comment on this subject right now except to say that we are taking all allegations very seriously and are complying with all involved to resolve this matter quickly. I guess, as a policeman, I'm always looking out for the dealer. And in this case, the dealer is the local shop. As far as what the police can do, uh, we're very limited because it's not illegal. We decided to ask the local shopkeeper about their views on this issue and why, in light of these new discoveries, they continue to sell such a controversial product. So, are you thinking of taking the product off the shelves? Listen, we've all heard the rumours. Until I get some actual proof, we're not taking anything off the shelves. We found a lot of conclusive evidence corroborating those rumours. Surely it'd be better for the community to be safe than sorry. Listen, it's all a load of nonsense. It's just a load of druggies. There we have it. Despite some fairly conclusive evidence, it seems this is an issue still very much in debate. This problem needs to be addressed quickly before it spreads to neighbouring villages and beyond. But until the manufacturers and the local stores take decisive action, the sound of addiction will continue unabated. Good night. If you or someone you know have similar issues, you can get more information at www.getagrip.issue or call 01234 432 123.